Okay, so I have uh, started making a set of 18th century stays. Uh, this is kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know where it actually fits in history, but basically this is how far I've gotten. I've made them using a old denim shirt, a little bit of linen I had laying around, and a stripy shirt. You can see this one of Xavier's old shirts. Both the denim and this stripy shirt are Xavier's old shirts. Um, and the pattern, it calls for zip ties for the stays, which I think is so cool. <laughs> and I learned how to make eyelets, and that is surprisingly fun. So, grommets, I don't know, are they eyelets also? Same word, different, I don't know. So uh, you can actually even see where the pocket on the shirt was because it shows on the outside of the stays. But anyway, so they are incomplete, but they are, they have been so much fun. I didn't realize how easy it was to create something so structural and so intriguing. So this is an idea I will probably be revisiting. And there's a couple of pieces on the piano that will be the lining. All right, let's see how far we got. A couple of these, I'm starting to learn. <laughs> so a couple of them are a little bit more, and then you can see at the beginning, I got nothing. <laughs> so there definitely is a learning curve on how to get, how to get them punched completely through, all the way through, because it's quite a bit of, because it's quite a bit of fabric in there. Almost. I'm making a mess out of that one. Let's try. Let's try again. Sounds like it's through. There we go. That one is through. All right. Let me clean up this mess of fabric spots. I don't know what the trick is to getting them all out of here. There we go. So, put that back in the box. But first of all, let me go ahead and clean up these little guys, and then we'll go ahead and start the... Uh... <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and start tapping these guys in place. All right. So let's see, according to the instructions, what are we doing here? Drill a hole, we've done that. Number two, insert the grommet. Let's do this. Let's insert some grommets. We've got a grommet. Insert washer, step three. I guess it's that side up, but it's not real clear. Beat it. Okay. So here we go. Install, put the install rod on washer, then hammer the eyelet and washer together. All right, here we go. Hey, that's cool. It works. Okay, follow me on, get the little fuzzies out of the way, get the washer in place, and then fit that baby on there and give it a whack. Beautiful. <laughs> Not so beautiful because I did them the wrong way out. Okay, note to self, make sure you've got the eyelets happening on the pretty side. Okay, I will either be your guiding light or your cautionary tale, right? 
note to self. I don't know how to take them apart, so they're staying that way. <laughs> And besides, this is a foundational garment, so I'm thinking probably not going to be seen a whole lot. We'll see. And there they are. I'm very happy with all of these except the top two, and that's fine. I did the top two backwards. No worries. I think, right? So that's the back of my set of 18th century stays made out of recycled fabric. <laughs> so I bought these zip ties. They are 36 inch extra heavy duty white cable ties, okay? Looks like this. I have a whole bunch of them. And they fit into the channels like so. It's actually really quite easy to get them in, which I think is really cool. So what I'm going to do is cut them so that there is the right amount of space left over. And then, okay, we're seeing that's not the easiest thing said or done. And then there are sharp pointy edges. And that's where the sandpaper comes in. So I'm going to scoot this over and I've got the sandpaper. And what I'm going to do is just pull the edge across and get the sharp pointy bits knocked off. Okay. And that looks good. And this already is kind of the pointy business because that's the end. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go ahead and just put them in one by one. Let's see if the scissors help. Oh, good. Okay, so if I crush it really good with these, then I can cut it with these. And these are only here to cut threads like so. So I think we can set that aside. Okay, so this one is ready to go here. So I have it roughly a half inch from each end. So I'm going to go ahead and sand the edges so they are nice and smooth going in. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, there they are. First two are in, okay? Now, and that gives it, oh, <laughs> and every now and then that actually works. And then sand, sand, sand. By the way, this is 50 grit aluminum oxide 3M sandpaper, which I borrowed, so to speak. <laughs> from my husband's sandpaper stash. Okay, so this one will go right here. And it goes, and we're just gonna give it a little push. So you can see where these edges are. I think I may have gotten that one a little bit short, so you know what we're gonna do. And I'll just push it out a little bit and see if it looks like it might fit here. Yeah, see, I feel like I got it about a quarter inch too short. So what we're going to do is we're going to find another place to put it. And I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and cut this one right about, I don't know, what do you think? Does it look like it might go good there? Ooh, that looks like a good spot for it. So we're just going to be creative. Put it in wherever it wants to go. Okay. Very good.
So this evening I sewed together the inner lining of the 18th century stays. Uh, I used the legs of a pair of jeans and um, behold the batness of my corset. <laughs> and um, that's how the other side looks. And so the, what I think is kind of fun about this is that these different layers, the outer layer on the front is a denim shirt, came from a denim shirt. Then there's some a layer of linen that I had just had laying around. And then the inner layer is also a shirt. And then this side is made from a pair of my jeans. So the next job is to go around and do the binding, which is not unlike a quilt. So that'll be kind of fun. And then there's a few other details yet, and then I'll lace it up. Okay, and give it a whirl, see how it fits. Cool. I'm loving just making small steps progress, you know, it's kind of cool. There's not much that can't be fixed by hitting the uh, reset button. <laughs> All right, well, I have ouch, I've done a number, haven't I? What did I hit? Oh, I hit a bone. Yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do is go through and scoot all the bones because I'm going to sew the top first and what I'm going to do is just go through here and hit the, just scoot the bones down about an inch or so and uh, see if I can just get them all out of the, out of the zone. Some of them will move and some of them won't move, I can tell. Okay, so. I'm still hoping to be able to do this by machine. But you know, some days it works and some days it doesn't. So we're gonna try one more time. Did I ruin it? All right, let's try. Does it wake up without? Hindrances? Yeah, it does. Okay, let's see. Close your fingers. I'm going very slow. <laughs> What have I done with the pin cushion? Okay, I'm moving the pin, the bones out of the way as much as possible. Some of them are in channels where they um, really can't be moved further down. So, we're just seeing. I'm just taking it very slow because I really don't want to break the needle. I'm moving the bones out of the way as much as possible. Okay, here we go. Yeah? You hear my doggie. What do you suppose my doggie needs? You need to go see Daddy? Yes, I hear a squeaky dog.
Let's see what we can do for that squeaky dog. <laughs> I had an old linen tablecloth that must have come from family from a very, very long time ago. It had a couple of little holes in it. It had some stains. And so it wasn't gonna ever be used as a tablecloth again, but I was able to make it into an 18th century chemise. Now this is, if you're not familiar, this is the garment that goes under the stays. It's kind of a slip, but it has sleeves. And, um, but it feels so good to wear. I mean, this old, old linen is so crazy soft. And you're not gonna be able to see it in this light, I don't think. But it has this really cool um, pattern in the weave that I just think is really cool. So yeah, it's, um, it's a little clunky as a first attempt, but so, so much fun to wear because it is so comfortable. So that is part of my capsule wardrobe um, project. They say, uh, history bounding folks say, start with undergarments. <laughs> if you want to wear uh, historical clothing, start with the undergarments. So I think more than anything, I just wanted to try it and have the experience of making a chemise and a corset. So that's one thing that I've got on the underway. I've also mentioned before that I'm working on a pair of 18th century stays and I've made a good deal of progress. I, um, I attached the lining and then I came along this weekend and um, sewed this part of the lining to the back. I don't have the bottom done. And on both sides. So the lining is now attached where the gussets are. And then I added this binding and I thought while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and add a piece of vintage lace from my stash. And then <laughs> vintage lace, I couldn't get it to lay nicely. So I came back through and just um, tacked all these little points down because they just, I mean, it's been so long, even ironing couldn't make this stuff. Um, it's been so long since it's made, I guess. I don't know. Um, it was just one big wrinkly mess. So I came along and um, sewed it all down, sewed all the little points down so <laughs> it would be pretty again. And so I really like how it looks so far. And this is the front. It's going to go on like so. And... I'm already planning and plotting my next one because this is so cool. Naturally, it would be good if I finished the first one first. So I have the bottom edge to do and then it will be time to lace this baby up on top of my new chemise and see how it works. Um, I have tried it on. It feels really good on. I am really totally looking forward to being able to um, put on the finished garment though. So the bottom edge is up next. And I still think it looks like a bat. <laughs> hey everybody, I am here with the uh, 18th century stays that I've been working on. I have, um, I came through here and just uh, did a little bit of sewing at the, each one of these at the end of the um, zip ties that I used as boning. And so that keeps it in place and it also shows me when I go to sew along this edge where the end of the thing is. So um, that's one little thing that I did. Um, I thought it would be a little cuter. <laughs> I thought it would be a little bit more decorative. It turned out to not be all that great, but it's okay. Uh, again, I'm trying to tamp down my urge for perfectionism and really keep it in the, f because the more I want to make it perfect, the more I just am not gonna get it done. So <laughs> it's really important for me to kind of soldier on even though it's not perfect. I did uh, bind the top. I think it doesn't look that great. I haven't tried pressing it. It doesn't look that great, but you know what? Again, I'm working against my own perfectionism. I am binding with strips of linen that um, from a piece of cloth that I hand dyed ages ago. So it's kind of, it goes from this uh, pale blue on into kind of a pale pink uh, with all the lavenders and stuff in between. So as I need a strip, I just hack off another piece and then sew them together. And I'm gonna try I, I really thought about using cotton twill tape, which I read in the book about corsets is the more um, authentic, historically accurate way to do it, but 
<laughs> again, since I'm not really doing this for uh, historical accuracy, but I'm more going for just having a really cool garment to wear, um, I think I am going to continue using the same kind of binding that I used at the top, but I'm probably not going to add the lace this time uh, on the bottom. So I am <laughs> having a little talk with myself about how it's okay if it doesn't end up perfect. I'm a little... Um, you know, when it, I know how to bind this part, but you know, these little pieces at the top, that's the part that has me a little bit um, feeling insecure and overwhelmed. So I'm just gonna try and um, really try to not let my perfectionism get the best of me because it, you know, that can really take the fun out of it sometimes. So I'm just gonna try. <laughs> We're gonna try to really keep this wabi-sabi and try to get this part finished up because I want to wear it. I really want to wear it because I think it'll be fun. I just I really think it'll be fun. So I have some linen, hand dyed linen. I have uh, the bottom to finish and I have needle and thread. So I really, I have nothing left but excuses. <laughs> I'm going to force myself to sit down and do this. The beauty about making videos about projects that you like is that um, I really can't just put it aside when I get overwhelmed or kind of freaked out about one element of it. I can't put it in a UFO pile because I really want the video done. So that's really kind of helping. <laughs> so if you are like me and are better at starting projects than you are at finishing them, having a video, uh, a diary vlog kind of thing is, uh, a good incentive to get that next step done because this is the difference between wearable and not wearable and we definitely want it to be wearable and if I didn't have kind of the accountability of YouTube it might kind of go in a <laughs> in a UFO pile for a while just because I'm a little intimidated by that one part but you know what we're gonna try okay and that's all any of us can ever do is when something's overwhelming a little bit challenging just give it a whirl. What's the worst that can happen? There's no wrong answer here. There is no worse scenario. The worst scenario is I could wear something else. <laughs> That's not that bad, right? So here we go. Let's do this thing. Well, I have made some progress on my 18th century stays. I have the binding complete along the bottom tabs. I found this to be the least fun of all of it <laughs> that I've done so far. The most fun, I think, was putting in the grommets and doing the boning channels with the zip ties. That was really fun. Uh, doing the binding has not been fun at all. Now, the only thing left on it is to uh, attach straps. It gets a strap here to strap here. Uh, they go over the shoulders and attach then in the front. And I don't have that complete, but otherwise I think this is very ready to wear and I'm kind of looking forward to trying it on and seeing how it uh, changes my shape if at all and um, yeah so thus far I have purchased the pattern the zip ties the grommets and I think that's it because the um, the outer layer of denim came from an old shirt the two inner layers of cloth came from an old shirt. The uh, denim lining came from a pair of jeans. And the lace was in my stash. And this hand dyed linen was also in my stash. So um, I have very little invested. And you can even see the pocket. <laughs> you can even see the pocket on the shirt. Because I thought to myself, I didn't really think this through, obviously, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be fun to have a pocket in the corset? Well, of course, by the time you put the boning channels in there, there's no way to actually use the, <laughs> the pocket, but that's beside the point. I am pretty happy with it. So I guess it's time to uh, put those straps on and try her out. Not bad for an old tablecloth and a pair of jeans and a couple old shirts. <laughs> Feels funny, but I could get used to it in a hurry.
<laughs> Looks really nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. How do you like my pocket? Yes. <laughs> I love the etching. The edging. This. Mm -hmm. It's some hand dyed linen. I I dyed it years and years ago, and then um, worked out worked out to use it for this. I found doing the the tabs really to be a pain, but. As long as you don't look too close, it's still fun. Well, it's an undergarment. Nobody should be looking close. That's right. It is an <laughs> undergarment. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to be on the internet in my underwear. Oops. <laughs> don't tell my mom. Yeah. Or your husband. <laughs> my husband's holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Why a silly thing. Uh.